Hello and welcome to another Blender Know How tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a cloth simulation similar to this one. And this is actually, I'm going to pause it right here. This is actually very useful for a lot of different things uh, that you can do within Blender or in just 3D in general. Cloth is everywhere, and so if you can uh, create that. Oh, I didn't actually make it collide with the ground, but that's okay. The concept is still there. Uh, if you can make a cloth, there are a lot of things that look a lot better. And honestly, Blender has a, a decent cloth sim that you can do within it. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and click up File, New, in general. And I'm going to get rid of this cube because we don't actually need it. I'm going to make a plane just for the ground. Uh, this time we'll actually make it collide with it. So it'll actually look better than the one I just showed you. I'm going to create a sphere for it to, for the cloth to interact with, and I'm going to create a cloth itself. Um, I just realized I have not been telling you exactly what shortcuts I've been using, uh, but just as a recap, if you're very brand new to uh, Blender, go ahead and hit Shift A to add, and then click on the things that you like to add. To move things, because we've only moved things up and down, uh, just click on your object and hit G, and hit Z. That will lock it to the Z axis. Or you can hit G and middle mouse click and drag up and it will lock it to that axis. Also to scale, you just click on your object and hit S. And then you're done. Okay, so now that we're all caught up with that, let's get on with the physics. So let's enable this one first. So let's make it bigger. And something to know about physics is it operates with the vertices. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And I, you can notice that there's only four vertices. There's one right here, 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 and here. So the physics for this will actually be horribly poor. Uh, but let's just hit A to select everything and hit right click and hit subdivide. Now we have more vertices that the physics engine can work with. But this is not even close to as many as I think it should have. Uh, I'm going to click 10 and see where that gets us. Uh, this is actually not even close as well. Uh, this will give you physics. This was probably enough that you can actually see something, maybe for a prototype. Uh, but be careful as you increment this as well. Uh, I don't know what computers you're using, but if your computer can't handle large amounts of vertices, maybe go up by one and know that every time you increase, it's going to uh, double the vertices and it stops at 10 so you have to type in numbers above 10 but it will still yeah okay so I said to make sure I was questioning myself there for a second yeah so you can just go ahead and type in numbers above that but just know that the higher you get it's going to be nearly duplicating the vertices. So it's kind of exponential. So like if I were to go to 21, I'm getting quite a bit more vertices. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to try and get up to probably 30. I'm going to need more than that. I'm going 50, 75. As many vertices as your computer can handle, you should probably do it. Um, yeah, let's try that. I know that seems like a lot of vertices, but honestly, for the physics engine, it will be perfect. Uh, just go as high as you can. Don't break your computer, though. Uh, then go into, not modifier, go into the physics tab that's down here at the very bottom, and click cloth. And because this is just going to be a quick tutorial, I'm going to show you the quickest setting to click, and it's really hidden, honestly. It's right here. And you can just click on cotton, denim, leather, rubber, or silk. I'm going to click on silk, and you can see that things changed all down here. Uh, you can learn what all these are, and maybe in another video I will actually explain a little bit more what these are. But for this simple tutorial, uh, I would stick to these and then tweak it from there. Because it will just be easier that way. And then go in here and click collision on both of these. And we'll probably just leave the defaults for them because they work pretty great. Uh, go back to the cloth and let's go to cache. So the cache is ultimately like a, a temporary storage for 
your uh, not render or animation but the frames it's how you can keep the data logged so that you don't have to like recalculate it every time because if I if I play this it will actually fall and you can do that but if you can click on bake all dynamics it will actually go through and it will bake that so that you don't have to worry about it uh, like f not freezing up but going really slow so it takes like the first time you hit bake it's gonna take maybe it, it could take up to a half an hour or, or longer depending on your scenes um, depending on your computer you can get this done in maybe like 30 seconds so this one's actually halfway done now so it's I think it'll work out just fine just to, by baking this and then going through the animation so I'll let this finish Sweet. Okay, so now that that is done, if we just go ahead and hit play, we can see what this is actually going to look like. And we can zoom in here, and it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm actually rethinking there's another setting that we might want to have used. Um, I'm just going to show you where it's at, but I'm not going to actually do it and bake it, uh, just for the purpose of time, but I'll show you exactly where that would be. So make sure you're in your physics tab and you're clicked on your cloth. Oh, as well as everything's going to be brayed out. And you just have to hit free bake before you can edit things. So once you do that, then you're going to look for uh, right here, collision. And you're going to want to enable self collision. And I, oh, it actually will let you change it, but nothing will actually change until you rebake it. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you click self collision, and that will make it so that your object doesn't go like inside of itself. It's kind of self-explanatory. It self, it collides with itself, so it doesn't overlap. But we're just gonna it, let's just say it works for right now on this. Um, but yeah, that's there. Now you can see that this is pixelated horribly. It's almost like you took this into Photoshop and distorted it like crazy. Uh, and the easiest fix is you can always subdivide this more before but that will take a longer bake time and it will take more resources on your computer as well so uh, let's just click on the modifier and we can subdivide it afterwards and get some pretty decent results make sure that you right click and hit smooth as well and that will iron out all the details so now we have a silk like material that we have just subdivided afterwards and it still looks pretty good so really you just need to get as many vertices beforehand to get the physics engine to cooperate and then afterwards you can use uh, more modifiers on your object sweet well I hope that you have uh, learned something from this video um, if you've liked it like it in down there and if you uh, really liked it subscribe uh, yep thank you check out some more of the videos bye